Game six in Nashville, ladies and gentlemen, the new lines. And Joel Valley scores 30 seconds into the game. Oh, Morgan Fotinos, Eli Tolvanen. All five E5 goals. Tage Thompson, Draper, Duke Draper. Not like this. Come on. Not like this. Five on three penalty kill. What are you idiots doing? Why are you taking? No. We had a 5-2 lead. Oh, Cameron Ramsey, you short-handed beast. What a fucking game. Ranton and scores a power play goal as well. Five minutes left in the second period. Nashville Predator fans are stunned. How do I get five straight minor penalties? There you go, Tage Thompson. Keep on fighting. Tage! Oh my god, what a save by Sub-Zero. There you go, Draper. Duke. The Duke, what a save by him, oh my god! Yarventi had a one-timer cross crease. Barkley Goudreau, oh, gets wrecked, nice job. But Lazat, in alone, no! And the Colorado Avalanche defeat the Nashville Predators in six games. All right, Nashville, we are back. After the devastating playoff loss to the Colorado Avalanche, game six overtime, round one again. I've been here for six years. I've made the playoffs four times and I've lost in the first round every single time. And once again, the Stanley Cup window is closed. I opened it up for the Maxi Manisimov rookie contract in years two and three. But next year, he's getting $12 million per year. We're going to have to say goodbye to some veteran players. Philip Forsberg, Tage Thompson, Victor Hedman. I don't know if I can bring you guys back. It's been a wild ride. We have a good team, but I'm hoping the future is bright, but the Colorado Avalanche are just way too freaking good. And my goaltending situation, man, every single year, it's the same old, same old. I just can't get goaltending when I need it. Look at this. 3-2 loss in game one, 5-3 win in game two. So three goals against in both games. 5-2 loss in game three, 4-1 loss in game four. A 4-2 win, finally. So, I mean, even we played them in the last game of the regular season. It took us one, two, three, four, five. It took us our sixth game in a row playing them to keep them uh, beneath three goals scored. God damn, you just can't stop them. And then we finally get a lot of goals here in game six. I thought we might be able to force a game seven. And what do they do? They match us. They get seven as well. We take, what was it, six straight penalties and of course, goes to overtime, and what happens in overtime? GM Superb Man loses. So I'm only hoping that the Colorado Avalanche can go on and win the Stanley Cup, salvage the season a little bit, you know, like we lost to the best team in the NHL, but it doesn't help. It really doesn't. So uh, let me just show you guys the player stats here uh, for the playoffs. Me and the Twitch scouts have already gone through it, but I want to show you guys. Tomasino did his job. Anisimov in his very first playoff run. Seven points in six games played. Three goals, a plus one. I mean, for a 20-year-old, he did his job. Logging first line ice time. He did a great thing. Eli Tolvin in six points. Joel Lavalle, five goals. No assists, but five goals. I love that. My two first overall picks came through. Uh, Cameron Ramsey, depth. Philip Forsberg, you want a little bit more out of your captain right there, but not horrible. Four, four points in six games played. Fotino's got three. Draper. But then Tage Thompson, a minus six with two points. Just not cutting it. Yarventi. Uh, McTavish, not great. I know everyone gets on McTavish, but then Kempe, Adrian Kempe, zero points in six games played, a minus nine. This is what I mean. These veterans that I brought in for the Stanley Cup window, hey, it's time to move on from them. They didn't even do anything for me, right? Rasmus Dahlin, who we also locked up for the next eight years. Also, he did a great, uh, great job, six points in six games played. Victor Hedman could have done better. Uh, Norlander, Foot, Poirier, guys with contracts that are expiring. I want to bring them back. We got to see what we can do. Uh, and then Gustav Kovalev. I think Kovalev and Hedman. Uh, that's when we had them on the first line, and they just, I guess, they were just getting torched by Rantanen, Makar, and McKinnon. Right? It is what it is. But then the story, oh, the big story, is Yaroslav Askarov, two three with the overtime loss, an eight seven six save percentage. And a goals against average of 416. I don't care who you are. Your goaltender giving you those numbers in the playoffs. You ain't winning. He averaged over four goals against per game. I would have had to average five goals a game to win the series. Are you freaking kidding me? 
Uh, so I, I don't know what it is about goaltending. I really don't. I try my best to put a good blue line. I have a good head coach. I Askarov is an 87 overall goaltender with X factors. Um, his poise is 84. I don't see anything there that would indicate a horrible goaltender, but it is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we just did not get it done. All right. So we have a lot of simulating to do in this video. I don't know where I want to take it. I want to maybe take it to free agency because there's a lot of decisions to be made, or we can maybe take it to preseason if I can get through the draft and free agency in, uh, in, uh, in a decent amount of time, but I don't want to rush myself. We got to go through the rest of the playoffs, see who wins the Stanley Cup. We don't have a draft lottery pick this year. That all ended last season when we made our trades in year three. All of those draft picks are gone right now. But considering that I'm trading away Forsberg and Tage Thompson, you know, we can get draft picks back either for this year or for the future. Now, me and the Twitch Scouts, we already went through all of the draft picks, and there are some good players, but they're all in like the top 10. Um, unlike the previous draft where we scored big with all those defensemen deep in the draft, there's really not much here. There was a few guys like, uh, Matei Placanix with the gold truculents, but he's also another defender. Uh, Reza was another defender with a gold ice pack. Don't even know what the hell that's going to be. And, uh, Bloomdahl, right? Bloomdahl was, he doesn't have a gold, but he's got a four bar silver X factor. So it's a guarantee and he can play the left and right side and another defender. So there really wasn't any, um, there really wasn't any forwards. So we're thinking about if we're trading Forsberg, we're trading Thompson, we're getting draft picks. Let's get draft picks for upcoming years. Uh, there was this goalie packet Slatty with a gold sponge. He might be medium elite. Don't know. And also there are some players, uh, with medium elites that are deeper in the draft, like this guy Darius Hurd, he's going 68th overall. He's got medium elite potential, but no X factor. So kind of like a Chara draft pick that you guys had for us in the past. Uh, was there another low elite guy as well that was like that? Hang on a second, low elite. So Placanix, Bloomdahl, was it Brenda Moore? There was another guy I thought I was looking at. Hoyle? Uh, it was Hoyles. There you go. Malachi Hoyles. We don't know if he's got an X-Factor, but at 221, we could just try out. Maybe he's low elite. Maybe he's medium top six. I don't know. The point is, it doesn't seem like it's as deep as a draft this year as it was last year. So if we are acquiring draft picks, um, we are going to go for future draft picks. And the reason we have to trade Forsberg and Thompson is because, you know how last offseason we extended Anisimov? Well, his contract's going to kick in this year. I want to do the same thing for our other two players who are going to play on the first line this season, Fotinos and Lavalli. They have next year their rookie contract, but this year's free agency is when I can extend them. And I don't want to wait. I want to extend them right now. But I won't be able to extend them if Forsberg and Thompson are still on the team because their contracts will contra or not contradict, but they will uh, they will still be on the books and the game will not let me go over the salary cap in future years. So that eight and a half million and that seven million has to go so I can get Fotinos in at maybe eight mil and Lavalli in at maybe eleven. I don't know what they're gonna want, right? But I have to get rid of those guys. And also Forsberg's thirty three, Tage Thompson. And I tried him out for a year. He didn't have a good playoff run. I know Forsberg is a is a favorite for Nashville Predator fans, but in this universe, we're in 2028. I mean, here in 2023, Forsberg, yeah, he got to the Cup final, but since that Cup final, it's been playoff woes and first round exits, including my universe. It's another first uh, four first round exits for Philip Forsberg, right? So it's real bad. This guy's got to go and play some competitive hockey somewhere else, but I am not trading him to the Western Conference. No way. Not Chicago, nothing like that. He is going to the East, all right? So uh, let's start this video up by simulating the playoffs and see who wins the Stanley Cup in year number six. Hang on one second. All right, so let's get the simulation started. I'm actually rooting for the Colorado Avalanche. All right, so if we're going to be trading away Forsberg and Tage Thompson, we might need some storylines right here, right? Which teams are in the playoffs right now that maybe don't go all the way or are close to going all the way and are willing to take on a veteran like Forsberg, like Thompson, to try to take the next step, all right? So the Colorado Avalanche obviously would be a team that we could trade them to, but I don't want that nonsense. Nobody in the West. Nobody in the West. The Boston Bruins and the Eastern Conference, uh, the defending Stanley Cup champions, uh, the, wait, 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 did Boston win it last year or, oh man, I forget, hang on, can I go to, I can't go to awards right now, right, I can't go to awards, I think it was the Boston Bruins, or was the Vancouver Canucks, damn it, man, it was one of those two teams, it might have been Vancouver who won it last year, 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, the Boston Bruins, I could maybe trade them there. Whoever comes out of the Islander and Columbus Blue Jacket series, I could maybe trade them there. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers, they lost in the first round. Bo uh, Buffalo lost in the first round as well. Ottawa might be a team. Montreal might be a team. Yeah, those are some teams that we can maybe trade them to. So let's uh, just continue the simulation here and see what happens. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets defeat the Anaheim Ducks in seven. Calgary versus Vancouver going to seven. What about the East? Montreal over Philly. Ottawa over Buffalo. Boston over Toronto. And we're still waiting for game seven between the Isles and the uh, the Jackets. We got Chicago versus Colorado. That was our series, man. That was our series. Damn it. I wanted that series. Chicago, Colorado. You better whoop their ass, Colorado. I swear to God, if Chicago beats you, I'll be pissed. Uh, Calgary versus Winnipeg. And you got Montreal versus the Islanders. So the Columbus Blue Jackets losing to the Islanders. That could be interesting. And then Ottawa versus Boston. All right, so let's advance a few days here. Let's see what we got. Colorado up one nothing. Good. 1-1, Winnipeg's up 2-0, uh, Montreal, oh, oh just the 2-1, 2-1, Colorado and Winnipeg over Calgary and Chicago, and in the East, you got Montreal over the Islanders and Boston over the uh, Senators, every series right now is 2-1, 3-1, for good, good, Colorado's a good team, see, the Avalanche, man, we, we drew a very tough matchup in round one, <laughs> we're the young team, they're the veterans, they're gonna age out eventually, but they're still a top tier team. Yeah, they, Jesus, they just whooped the Chicago Blackhawks. So take that. Where's the fan art about Chicago getting beaten five? I got to six. I got to six overtime, Chicago. Yeah, how does that feel? Winnipeg up 3-2 over Calgary. Boston up 3-2 over Ottawa. And the Montreal Canadiens are through. So maybe the Islanders could take on Philip Forsberg. Maybe the Islanders could take on... Uh, 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 what's his name? Tage Thompson. You know, they get to the second round, but they lose. They need a little bit more. That's a storyline that could work out for us. Uh, let's continue here. Uh, yep. Ooh, game seven, Calgary versus Winnipeg. And game seven, Ottawa versus Boston. Woo, Boston, you let them get back in it. What's going to happen here in game seven, both series? Winnipeg gets through against Calgary. It's going to be a Winnipeg, Colorado Western Conference final. And Ottawa comes back to defeat the Boston Bruins. So the Boston Bruins, maybe? You know, they're a team that we've traded to in the past. Maybe Forsberg to Boston. Keep him in yellow. All right, interesting. So, man, three Canadian teams in the final four. Let's go. Ottawa Hab series in the conference finals would be wild. That building would, uh, those buildings. I mean, the fans don't have to travel very far. Ottawa up one nothing. The Colorado Avalanche up one nothing. All right, very good. Colorado Avalanche up 2 nothing. A 1-1 series tie in the Eastern Conference. Three, not fucking hell, man. I told you. We got the worst damn team in round number one. It is ridiculous. Ottawa up two to one. Advanced day. The Avalanche up three to nothing. Still two to one. The Avalanche have swept. They go to game six in round one. They go to game five in round two. And it only takes four games in round three. They're the Terminators, man. They're getting even stronger as the series goes on. The Ottawa Senators up 3-1 to one over the Montreal Canadiens. No way. The Sens going to get back in the playoffs here. And yes, they are. The Ottawa Senators versus the Colorado Avalanche in year six. Let's take a look at some of these lines here, shall we? We already know about the Colorado Avalanche, but I'll give you guys a uh, quick look-see. Uh, Landy, McKinnon, Rant. I mean, Jesus. I was never overcoming that. It's too much. It's And it's plus five. It's too much. Good second line with Newhook. They're fucking Cooley and fucking... Oh, I hate these names. Pajot and Lazat. They're fourth line scored on. Oh, my God. Bowen, Byram, and McCarr. I mean, a 90 and a 95. Jesus. Gerard, Jiracek, 87. And then... Oh. Ah! Oh, he pulled his save percentage above 900. at 79 overall. Get the fuck out of here. And the Ottawa Senators. Let's see. The Sens... Ooh, they got Connor Hellebuck in the net. 35, he's dropping off. But Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzler, and uh, Alex Dabrinka. Good line. I mean, they just don't have that 95, 96. I mean, not nobody does, basically. It's like it's the best players in the game. So it's a good first line. Uh, ben DeHaan, who was in that draft year with, uh, was it, uh, was that the same year as, 
Anisimov or was it Laval? It might have been Lavalle. I can't remember. Uh, Hayton and Heponiemi. All right. Not bad. Uh, Boucher, Losterainen, and Formentin. Now, they have some depth, and they have a good first line. I give it to Colorado, though. Uh, Chabot and Bernard, I mean, look at their blue line, nowhere near what, uh, what, uh, Colorado has, but they do have a goalie and a 930 save percentage. All right. Must be nice. Connor Hellebuck, how many years left do you got, my man? <laughs> Two more years after this at 7.6. He's 35. He's probably going to continue to drop off. Ottawa, this is your best chance, man. This is your best chance. All right, Twitch fans, put your money on the table. Who's winning the Stanley Cup final, Colorado or the Senators? Game one, let's see what we got here. Game one goes to the Senators. The Ottawa Senators take game number one. No way. The Senators just have that team right now. Uh, game number two goes to the Colorado Avalanche. We got a 1-1 series tie, ladies and gents. Game three goes to the Colorado Avalanche. <laughs> They're unstoppable, dude. They are unstoppable. Game number four, and the uh, Ottawa Senators get it tied up. Way to go, Sens. All right, it's a best of three now. Game five. And the Senators take it. Three to two lead for the Ottawa Senators. Are they going to do it? Canada's team? Canada's team? The Ottawa Senators one win away from Stanley Cup. Oh, it's going to seven. I can't believe it. It's going to game seven. The Colorado Avalanche. They're looking for, I think, their third Stanley Cup with this universe included with McKinnon and McCarr. And the Ottawa Senators are looking for their first Stanley Cup in, 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 in team history. And they do seem to do it every 10 years. Weren't they in the cup final in 07? Then they were back in it, or they were in the conference final, one goal away in like 17 or 18 and now in 28 they're back one win away one win away game seven goes to the ottawa senators the senators have won the stanley cup congratulations sense fans you got it done oh my goodness well, I was thinking maybe Thompson or uh, or Forsberg to Ottawa. I don't know if they need him anymore, right? So I got the Islanders I can trade him to. We'll take a look at the playoff tree quickly just so we can get the storylines going. Um, but we can... Uh, we can basically trade them to a team that lost in the Eastern Conference. I mean, you know, and we can even trade them to the Ottawa Senators if the trade works out. Like, if all of a sudden they want to load up to come back for another run... You know, because those first-round picks aren't going to feel great for them. But then again, if they just won the Cup, chances are next year's first-round pick, it's not going to be a lottery pick, right? So maybe we don't want to trade them there. But Montreal, that could be a destination. The Islanders could be a destination. Boston could be a destination. So if you guys in Twitch could remember that for me, Montreal, Boston, and uh, eh, Montreal, Boston... And the Islanders, yeah, yeah. And then the Senators at number four. The teams that lost in the first round, Philly, they got smoked. That Toronto got smoked, and Buffalo got smoked. No, no, they wouldn't want Tage Thompson back anyways. So, yeah, those three teams, Montreal, the Islanders, and the Boston Bruins are a team that I'd be willing to trade Tage Thompson and Philip Forsberg to, all right? All right, so there you go. There is the year six uh, 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 regular season. I think we're pretty much good. Yeah, let's just sim to the NHL entry draft. The Ottawa Senators are your Stanley Cup champions. Damn, dude. New salary cap going up. We also have the draft, draft lottery, but I'm not even going to worry about it because we are not there. The Seattle Kraken have won the NHL draft lottery, moving from the ninth position up to one. Isn't that multiple times now we've seen nine move up? Didn't I have uh, either Winnipeg's ninth or my own ninth and move up to first in one of those years? Number nine is lucky in this universe. LA moves up from eight to second. The St. Louis Blues drop back to Edmonton Oilers with McDavid and Dreisaitl. They are still getting draft lottery picks. They can't freaking figure it out, man. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. All right, so. All right. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Retired players. What do you guys think? Victor Hedman, is he coming back or not? I would almost. What do I want to have happen here? I did not think about this. Victor Hedman. I, I, I almost would want him to come back to play like second or third line time and then second line power play time because i still think he'll contribute and have a good season although i don't know if i can pay him like 10 or 11 actually no i can i can pay him 10 or 11 million for one year because lavalli and fotinos's contracts won't actually kick in till next season so anyone that i signed to a one-year deal is fine still okay okay but if he does retire he went out he went out with a good run here 
So let's see what we got. You retired players. Ovechkin is gone. How many did he end with? Ovechkin. Let's see. Uh, oh, he got over a thousand goals. There you go. Ov. Jesus. Nineteen hundred and twenty points in seventeen hundred and sixty-four games played. That's crazy. Malkin, Kopitar, John Tavares, Ryan O'Reilly, Logan Couture. Logan Couture is playing for the Lavelle Rockets of the AHL. Just get it over with and retire already, buddy. Jamie Ben, TJ Soshi, they're all the AHL. Roman Yossi. <laughs> oh, I fleeced Edmonton so bad. What did he do with the Edmonton Oilers? Let's see. So he had four seasons with the Edmonton Oilers. He only played 26 games this year. Did he get, did he get like scratched? He must have got scratched. He got scratched in his final season. Oh, no. Oh, no, dude. He's 75 overall. So he had four seasons with the Edmonton Oilers, right? Uh, 63 points plus 19, 63 plus 1, 51 plus 25. So the four seasons were good. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Let's see. And then the playoffs, 24, first game eggs. <laughs> 25. <laughs> oh, wait. He was, he was on my team in 24. Oh, he only got two seasons with them, and he got two wins. Oh, in four years, he got two wins in the playoffs. Oh, Jesus. They got so fleeced. They got so fleeced, man. Oh, my God. They never got out of the first round. Philip uh, Roman Yossi going back to when? Jesus. Going back to 2019, never got out of the first round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven first round exits in a row, followed up by missing the playoffs, followed up by missing the uh, uh, another first round exit. Oh, my God, dude. Just the Nashville players are tainted with first round exits. Zuccarello, Petrangelo, Kreider, Evander Kane. All right, so it looks like Hedman's staying. He should have been up here in points. Yeah, Victor Hedman is staying. Now, do I sign him? I don't know. Mark andre Fleury's gone. Simeon Varlamov, Brayton Holtby, James Reimer. All right, so retired players. We're actually, we, we have options here. We have options. Anze Kopitar is now a coach for the, for the Blackhawks. The hell with that. Go back to L.A. Coach retirement, blah, blah, blah. Draft class, blah, blah, blah. Pro scout calling, blah, blah, blah. And we're at the draft. All right, so let me just save this quickly. <sighs> the Ottawa Senators deserve to have their Stanley Cup. They should not have that taken away from them. And here we go. All right, so we are at the uh, we are at the draft lottery. Let's take a look at, or sorry, we're at the NHL entry draft. Let's take a look at the awards. Let's take a look at uh, our roster, see if anyone grew, any you know, all that stuff. So 2023, the first year, who was it who won the Stanley Cup the first year? It was like the St. Louis Blues, right? New York Rangers in year two, Colorado Avalanche in year three, Boston, it was the Vancouver Canucks last year, right? Sorry, I forgot about that. Boston Bruins, Vancouver Canucks, and now the Ottawa Senators. So back-to-back -back Canadian teams. And damn, the Colorado Avalanche, if they could have won that, they would have won in 2022, 2025, 2028. Three Stanley Cups in like... Seven years, that's a dynasty. Ottawa says no, they took it from them. President's Trophy goes to the Ducks. Uh, yeah, Colorado versus Ottawa. Uh, individual awards, Austin Matthews gets the Art Ross. Hart Memorial goes to Austin Matthews. James Norris, Victor Hedman. I mean, that's why you can't retire as the James Norris. Uh, Lady Bing, uh, Goudreau, Calder. Oh, Je Jeffrey Joffrey Esposito, the big man. So we finally lose our, uh, our Rookie of the Year streak. We had Joaquin Kemmel, then we had Maxime Anisimov, then we had Morgan Fotinos. Three years in a row, we won Rookie of the Year. It goes to Esposito this year, though. Tim Stutzla! Tim Stutzla with the con Smythe! And he sends fans watching right now. I know you're begging for that to happen. That looks great. That looks great, doesn't it? Timmy gets it done. Vesna Trophy goes to Connor Hellebuck. Wow. They had the Conn Smythe and the best goalie in the league. William M. Jennings, Bill Masterton, Edvinson. Jack Adams goes to uh, the New York Islanders head coach. Frank J. Selke goes to Barkov. I think uh, I, I think Anisimov can win that one, one of these days. Ted Lindsay goes to Matthews. Maurice Richard goes to Matthews. Matthews had a hell of a year. Just to get swept by Boston in round number one. Life of a Leaf uh, player. All right, so there's the awards, player stats. Let's go back and take a look at the player stats for the playoffs for the Ottawa Senators, the Stanley Cup champions. Let's see what they did. Ooh, Stutzla, 27 points in 24 games played, three game-winning goals. Great job to bring kit point per game. Hayton on the second line. Hepo Niemi, uh, Brady Kachuk, Ben DeHaan. <laughs> 
Remember we were looking at this guy, Shane Bendahan? We were thinking about, hey, we need a playmaker who doesn't uh, shoot. Look, he took 18 shots in 24 games played. The mofo does not shoot. He's getting second line ice, 18 minutes of time on ice. He's on the power play. You got 18 shots in 24 games played, man. Oh, my God. Could you imagine Ben DeHaan and Lavalley together? Lavalley had only goals, no assists. Ben DeHaan, only assists, no goals. Holy shit, man. That's hilarious. Defenseman Chabot, he had a great one. And then Hellebuck. Hellebuck went off, man. Hellebuck, huge. Huge in that series against the Colorado Avalanche. All right. So let's quickly take a look at our team, see if we got any jumps from our rookies. Anything like that would be very nice. Goaltenders, Askarov, he stayed the same. Uh, backup, Placanix still at 71. I don't know if Placanix is going to grow. I hope he does. We don't know, though. Darlene, 90. Victor Hedman, 88, so he grew. Oh, man, how much does he want? Ah, see, that's a problem. Victor, I mean, he just won the Norris. Oh, man, I might just let Victor Hedman walk. He wants one more year. <laughs> He's going to be a medium top six next season. But by this year, by this time next year, he'll probably be like an 83, 84. So it wouldn't be bad, but $11 million for 83 overall. Yikes. Foot. He does want to come back. I, I, I wouldn't mind signing Poirier, Nor Norlander. How much does Poirier want? I could sign them now. Oh, he wants. Nah, you know, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for all this. In the system, what do we got? Panayi. Panayi's up to 76 overall. That might be. He might be NHL ready, like as a depth player next uh, next season. Now you might be ready to go. Metropolit, uh, 74. Uh, Westcott, 69. Donovan, 64. All right, so we got some of these guys. This the only guy who was looking like he jumped Panay up to 76. Uh, let's go back into the main roster. Forward core. All right, so Anisimov, a 92. Didn't he, what, didn't he, was he 93? Did he drop? Was he? I can't remember. Shit. Either he was 92 or or he was 93 before. I cannot remember. Well, 92. He can easily, or he might have gone up. He was 92. Right. Okay. No, he started the season at 91. My Twitch scout's saying he was 92. Okay, good, good, good. Forsberg, uh, Tolvanen, uh, McTavish. Hey, McTavish grew to an 88. Yeah, see, this is the difference between Forsberg and McTavish. You're talking about one overall point and a bunch of X factors. But the age difference, 33 to 25. And also, I'm paying Forsberg 8.5 while I'm paying McTavish 6.250. You got to move on from Forsberg. Tomasino, uh, Lavalli, 86. Uh, Thompson, 86. Fotinos, 84. Ken Kempe Yarventi, uh, and then in the system, what do you got here? Bellows, Ramsey, 78, Draper, 77. I might even want to sign these guys long-term. Chara, 75. He's going to get the chance to play next year, I think. Buden Where's Budenz? Wasn't he like 70-something? Budenz is going to get the chance to play next year as well. So we just got to find like a fourth-line center because I think I have my team. Yeah. All right, so uh, YouTube, me and the Twitch Scouts have already gone through the strategy of what we, want, what we want to do. I don't want to waste your time going through every single one of the prospects. Just take my word for it. There wasn't many gold X factors out there. Um, we know the three teams that we want to trade to. The three teams were the Boston Bruins, the Montreal Canadiens, and the New York Islanders, I believe. So we'll take a look at those three teams, and we'll see where we can maybe move Forsberg and uh, Tage Thompson, all right? So let us start the NHL entry draft. Let's get right into this. And on the clock first are the Seattle Kraken. All right, so offer trade. So let me just throw up here. Let me just throw up. Uh, let me sort by age. It'll be a lot easier to find them. Forsberg. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, Forsberg and Tage Thompson, right? So first team, the Boston Bruins. They only want Tage Thompson, and they're a conservative buyer. Now, if I gave them Tage Thompson, they would be $3 million over the cap. Uh, they'd want to get rid of a guy like Yarncroc. Uh, let me just see. Uh, I don't want to take on... Yeah, okay, so they're willing to give these guys up, so you could make the cap work right there. So they're, they're upgrading... He would be over the league maximum salary cap. I could somehow still make that work. And then draft picks for like next year. It's a little bit high because they're a conservative buyer, right? I'm hoping that one of these teams are a full-on buyer. So that, that draft pick is a little bit high for me. What is the other teams? The Islanders and the Montreal Canadiens? Uh, Montreal. They don't want Tage Thompson. Do they want Forsberg? Uh, hang on a sec. Uh, they don't want Forsberg. And they're a buyer. Whoa. A buying team doesn't want the veteran players. Maybe they're just stacked with forwards? They got Slavkowski, they got Aho, they got Suzuki, they got Caulfield. They got, yeah, you know what? Their top six is already, they don't want to give up any of these guys. I could see that 
I could see that. I guess they need uh, they need blue line. They need blue liners. Okay, that's probably what they want. All right, so not going to make it work with the Montreal Canadiens. And last but not least, they're sell. The three teams for the storyline, none of them are buyers. All right, so that didn't work out for us, boys. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, let me see the CBJ. No, they're conservative sellers. All right, you know what? You know what? What about the Ottawa Senators? They're a team that's they're riding high right now. They want them both, and they're conservative buyer. They just won the Stanley Cup, and they're conservative buyers. <sighs> All right, let me just go through, and let me just see if there's any buyers here that want them. The Tampa Bay Lightning are buyers. They miss the playoffs. So they are not going through a rebuild. They want to, I mean, they got nobody. They have no four. Oh, I'm looking at defense. I was like, what? Uh, they still have Braden Point. They still have Sergachev. I mean, a winger for Braden Point. That might not be a bad idea. And then their draft pick next year, the 10th, they're looking to cut. It's not that much. That could be the one. Um, all right, so they do have a lot of uh, the cap hit, though. Actually, no, I have two players. That's why. All right, so let's try Forsberg, right? The left wing to play with Braden Point. That'll, that that makes sense to me. Uh, next year's first. And they're like $5 million over the cap, so let's see what we can do here. Uh, fuck. Every player is basically worth something. And I don't want to take on a contract anymore. So, like, Barbashev and White Cloud just to get them off the team. Uh, Bickle goes first overall to the Seattle Kraken. Maximus Bickle, there he is, 82 overall first rounder, uh, or first overall, he's kind of just mid-80s everywhere, going to be a solid player, he's got silver tape to tape, all alone, puck on a string, spinorama, and re relentless, <laughs> the Sarah Nurse diving one, <laughs> Maximus, it's a great first name though. Um, so, you know, hang on a second. Let's just go back to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I don't know if the Tampa Bay Lightning one's going to work because of the salary cap situation. They don't have that flexibility to make that trade work. Forsberg. Tampa Bay. Um, just let me just try to get this part of it done. Do they, do they want... The players that they're willing to give up are not players that have any kind of cap hit. So, like, what if I went, like, you, you, and Alexiev? They're probably going to let these guys walk anyways, so... Your upgrades disapprove. Oh, Nashville would have more than 50 players on my team, so I'd have to give them a few players. Uh, McIsaac and Hillis. Yeah, I can give you guys these two guys. There you go. How's that? League approved. All right, so this one does work. Um, I just got to look at their team and make sure I'm not fleecing them or hurting them in any way. Their goaltender situation, they still have Vasilevsky. They got to sign Vasilevsky, though. Huh. Uh, so they'll still have Sergachev and Cernak sign. They have Cody CC taking away White Cloud, but I'm still leaving their top two defense. So they can find a few more defensemen in free agency. And then they Braden Point. I'm putting another 32, 33 year old with Braden Point. Sorelli. They have Gurianov on the left. Joseph. I, I don't know. This this doesn't feel like a team that would be wanted. But they they want to go for. They just missed the playoffs. They're not getting any younger. Nah, it's not gonna work. All right, let's try something here. Then let's go find trade. Let's see what teams approach me for a guy like Forsberg. All right. I don't want to trade him to the West. I don't want to trade him to the West, man. Why couldn't? Oh! <laughs> no trades available. Oh shit. <laughs> Oh, my God. Um, this is rough. This is rough. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I have to. I have to. I, even if I just have to dump them to another team, I have to. Let me look for more buyers here. Tampa is just, I didn't like it. Uh, Toronto, buyer, doesn't want them. Vancouver, buyer, not giving them to the Vancouver Canucks. No way. And nope, not doing it. Uh, buyer, Chicago, no, fuck no. No, hell no. Uh, buyer, no. Uh, Detroit, buyer. Hmm. Detroit, interesting team here. Uh, do they have any bad contract? I could take on Alex Tuck just to take. Well, you might want to re-sign him. Damn it, man! I hate not having the pick where it goes every three minutes. Uh, Frederick was his first name. Frederick, yeah. Frederick Ramirez goes second overall to the L.A. Kings, a center power forward. He's not really that uh, six foot one. Uh, never mind. 192 pounds. Damn! Look at his look at his uh, wrist shot and slap shot. 91, 91, 91, 90. Not bad. Decent skater. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Ramirez right there. Nice shot for a power forward. Um, offer trade. Sorry that I keep on getting interrupted like this, boys. 
I just uh, might as well spend the time doing it right now. I know I could wait to my draft pick, but just in case, I don't want to miss out on anything. Um, all right, so where what team was I on again? It was the Detroit Red Wings, right? Is there any, like, what's their forward core look like? Larkin with Drew in. Yeah, they could use a Forsberg in there. They got some young players, but he would clearly be the best player. Uh, their blue line is already good with side. Yeah, they, their blue line's coming around. They have a goaltender. All right. Uh, what kind of salary would you be willing to dump here? Zaka, two years left. No, I'm not taking that on. Alex Tuck. I don't know if they want to re-sign Alex Tuck, though. Uh, this guy, Stevenson, 34 years of age, 80, 84 overall. He'll probably drop off. So if I get, like, Stevenson in there for Forsberg, Detroit would be over the league maximum salary cap. So I'm, like, I'm breaking apart their team to get Philip Forsberg. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, the Florida Panthers, do they have any really bad contracts? One bad contract that can just make it work. Marchand, one year, 80 overall. That could be it. They would still be over the league maximum salary cap. My God, Forsberg. My God, man. Uh, the Rangers are buyers, but I've already traded with them in the past, and I know they're going to be a hard team to make work. The Ottawa Senators, they just won the Stanley Cup, and they're just at the freaking salary cap. You know what? You know what? I might just want to do this. Send, you know what? Forsberg's been a good player for us. We want to send him somewhere where he can thrive. Send him to the Stanley Cup champions. Send him there. What's, his, what's their forward core look like here? You got Tim Stutzel. Oh, they got to sign Kachuk. Oh, no, they have Kachuk signed. We're okay. We're okay. They got to sign Ben Dahan, though. They got to sign Ben Dahan. But he's an RFA, so they can make that work. They could definitely make that work. Hayton is signed. And then all these other guys, like Hepo, yeah, Hepo Niemi and DeBrusque and Shaw, they can all walk. They can get Ben Dahan signed. So they'd have Stutzel, Debrinkit, Kachuk, Ben Dahan, Hayton, and Forsberg. All locked up, met your top six. Then you let some of these younger guys walk. Rodriguez is making four mil, so he can walk. Uh, Hepo Niemi is making four mil. He can walk. They can give that money to Ben Dahan. Uh, defensemen, they have Chabot, they have Sanderson. Yeah, they need defensemen. And Hellebuck's not going anywhere. He just grew to an 89. Even though he was 84 overall, he grew to an 89 because of the Vesna season. So he's reloaded for another two years. They're all in. They got a team that can win a cup. They're all in right now. Yeah, you know what? The Ottawa Senators might be the perfect team. McArdle. Uh, Jeffrey McArdle goes to the St. Louis Blues. All right, doesn't have any gold X factors. Power forward, though. Back at you, Eclipse, and no contest. He's uh, got the same same kind of build. EA Sports, do a better job with your freaking generic builds. <laughs> it's the exact same power forward build. Um, all right, so I think the Ottawa Senators are the team I want to trade to here, boys. I think the Sens are the team. So let's, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's give him something, something fun to go play for. And then their draft pick's not going to be much. But if they miss the playoffs, which they probably won't because they just won the Stanley Cup, but it's still, it's a, it's a draft pick. I can make it work. I might even be able to get two for them. So Forsberg, you can go to the Ottawa Senators for next year's first, and uh, I'll take uh, the year's uh, first after that as well, all right? And maybe I can take off some players that are going to ask for too much money so they don't re-sign them. So hang on a second. Uh, Klinberg. Uh, no, I'm not taking on Klinberg. Hepo Niemi. Let me take on let me take on Hepo Niemi from them just so they sign. Yeah, let me just take that contract on so they make sure to sign Ben Dahan and then they have Forsberg, all right? Because they're gonna have to. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna do that for them. They can make their own decision. Yeah, I'm not gonna start manipulating it like that. All right, so Forsberg for two first. Do they have any other prospects that can be thrown in there? Also, let me just sort by age. Uh, top nine, top nine, top four, 70 overall, Chevy. No, I don't need any other defensemen. I have a crop full of, def no, we'll just get draft picks. We'll just get draft picks. Uh, take Rodriguez back. Take Rodriguez back, you say. Okay. Yeah, all right, I'll take Rodriguez back. There you go. All right, so they don't have to sign Rodriguez. because He's bottom six. He's going to drop off. He didn't have an extension, did he? Let me just make sure. He did not have an extension. No, he does not have an extension. All right. Now, Forsberg, now, I think this straight up is actually a pretty even trade. They just won the Stanley Cup, so they got to be thinking that these first-rounders are not going to be lottery picks, right? And they're bringing in a guy, Philip Forsberg, who matches up with uh, Connor Hellebuck. He's going to have, like, three years left. So, I, I think this is fair, although I don't think it's going to go through. So, what I will do is I will add in a third-rounder from next season for them, all right? So I'm not giving them this year, but the third rounder for next season because that's the year that you don't know. 
or, or sorry, sorry, 2029. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I'll do a 2029, and then I'll do a 2030 as well. Yeah, there you go. All right, so they're they're getting Forsberg for two firsts, and they're upgrading those. Well, they're downgrading those firsts into third rounders. So they still have some draft picks, but they're losing the chance at the lottery. McCutcheon, defensive defenseman, goes to the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> still drafting, still freaking drafting, man. Oh my god. So uh, Twitch, do we have the green light for that trade? I think that's a pretty straightforward trade right there. I don't think I'm fleecing them, and uh, we're clearly making a Stanley Cup contender even better with this. All right, they're they're. Willing Willing to just say, all right, the window's open. Let's go and win as much as we can. I, I think this is a good trade. So Forsberg, uh, two-thirds. Not this year's third, sorry. Next year's third and the year after that for Rodriguez and uh, two first-rounders. All right, I want some good fan art for uh, Philip Forsberg and the career he's had in uh, Nashville. Forsberg, I apologize just couldn't get it done with you, my man. I tried, but the playoffs speak for itself. First round exit, 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 first round exit. It goes back to 2017-18 where we made it into the second round, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight years in a row of first round exit. So we gave it a shot, Philip, but I don't see it getting any better at 33 years of age going into the future, right? So Forsberg and two-thirds for a two-firsts and Evan Rodriguez from the Stanley Cup champions. Will it go through? Trade accepted. This is a really good deal for us in Ottawa. So we are definitely, so definitely we are saying yes to this one. I hope you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your time, Philip Forsberg. You will always be remembered as a great Nashville predator. But we've just opened up the captaincy slot. Who's the next captain of the Nashville Predators? Interesting. Interesting. All right, so I loaded up with some more defensemen. Good. Or some more prospects, I should say. And uh, last but not least, we got this player last season. Um, we picked him up from the Buffalo Sabres because Kempe just wasn't getting it done on the first line. He had a good regular season, 32 goals, but in the playoffs, just it just didn't just didn't work out tage thompson at 30 years of age i could keep him but again i have to free up that cap space does any team want him? Ooh, a team wants him the uh the arizona coyotes want him the boston bruins want him and the vegas golden knights want him all right well i want to trade them to the eastern conference although i don't really care about tage thompson as much as philip forsberg hmm 39th overall all right so let me see if Arizona or Vegas are buying teams. Because if they are, I'm going to take first rounders from them. Let's see. Conservative buyer for the uh, the uh, the Arizona Coyotes. Conservative buyer for the Boston Bruins and the Vegas Golden Knights. Conservative, so they're all they're all like conservative. I'm going to trade them to the Boston Bruins. Yeah, Boston, I will load you up again. Do you have any bad contracts? Oh, yeah, you got a few. Taylor Hall in there. You might want to bring back him. Cody Glass. Just need a few of these. 29-29. Uh, you can bring him back. Andreas Johansson, 85, though. I don't want to take any good players from them. It's these guys down here that they're willing to give up. All right, I'll take you. I'll take you. I'll take you. All right, there you go. Nashville would have more than 50 players. I'm going to have to wait for the uh, next uh, draft pick to happen here, boys. It's going to click through. I might as well just stop. Uh, but yeah, I can take on a bunch of players that they don't want anymore and just give them Tage Thompson and give them a chance to come back. They won the Stanley Cup, what, three years ago now or two years ago. So they're they're still going for it. Turner, the uh, left-wing grinder, <laughs> medium elite grinder, gold, no contest. <laughs> back at you, relentless, total eclipse, shrug it off. You can't hit this guy at all, man. What is his fighting skill? 80, all right, it's not that good. The Greg Turner, oof, the grinder. Um, all right, so offer trade. To the Boston Bruins, we are sending Tage Thompson. All right, uh, Tage Thompson, Boston Bruins. Uh, give me those players that you didn't want. Shea Theodore. I'm interesting that they're trading away Shea Theodore. Yeah, but I can't. I can't take on anything like that right now. What's a, does he play pinch shoot? I can't tell. I need. I need some NHL scouts. So McCabe, Yarncroc, and uh, Gregor. There you go. Pretty sure they didn't have extensions, but let me just double check. I have to always make sure. Yeah, they don't. And then I just have to give them some players that I don't need anymore. That's no problem. Uh, Coltsoff. No, wait, wait, wait. I need the guys who were signed. Yeah. 
Uh, A. Johansson, yep, give you up. And Fonstad, yep. <laughs> Don't know who the hell these guys are. Just got them for the AHL, I guess. So, Tage Thompson's got two more years. They're trying to continue to win a Stanley Cup. What's Pasternak at? What's his age now? Uh, Pasta, Pasta. He's 32. So, yeah, it's Tage Thompson is 30. McAvoy is 30. Shea Theodore is th 32. It fits in perfectly with the team that they have. Um, and they are conservative buyers. Their first rounder is a little bit more valuable than uh, the um, the Ottawa Senators. So I don't think I can get two, but maybe like a first and uh, I'll take a first and a third. What do you guys think about that? I think that's fair. Tate Thompson is not quite the player that Philip Forsberg is. So too much to take the second. Mm, no, nah, that, that first is a lot better than the Ottawa Senators. So I think I got to take that. Bad trade, you're dumb. That won't go. Won't go for, for me. Yeah, you're probably right. All right, I probably have to remove that third. I might even have to give them a third or like a like a fourth or something like that. That's why I wanted to trade into buying teams, right? Take Lindholm. One and three is too much, man. That's fair. No, yeah, okay. All right, so they were saying the one and the three is a little bit too much. These three players are inconsequential. These two guys are inconsequential. It's basically Tage Thompson for a first rounder next season. And given the fact that they're getting older, they might miss the playoffs, and it's a dump player. Yeah, that does make sense to me. All right, we're going to try it. Tage Thompson straight up for a first rounder from Boston next season. Trade rejected. All right, didn't go through. i got to do it again. i got to do it. <laughs> oh, do you think, when do you think EA adds a feature where it remembers your last trade and you can just put it back up on the screen? Never going to happen, man. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Oh, good God. Um, Aaron McKay, Bjorn Kroc, Reger. There you go. And Thompson. There you go. Somebody was saying Detroit is a buyer. Hang on a second. I didn't see if Detroit wanted Thompson. I don't know if they do. Ooh, you might have saved me here. But I got to take a lot of salary cap back. That was the problem with these teams. Um, hang on a second. Is there anybody on the team? Uh, Alex Tuck. Well, Tuck upgrading Tuck into Thompson's not a bad thing, actually. Ooh, that's actually not bad. That makes sense. Uh, Thompson is younger than Tuck. He's a better power forward, and he signed for two years. While Tuck is how old in this universe? He's 32. Yeah, that actually that actually kind of makes sense. And then the draft pick won't have as much value on it because they're a legit buyer, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Achoo, excuse me. I like that a little bit more. Yeah. So it's Tage Thompson straight up. Alex Tuck coming back. So last year we traded Alex Tuck to get Tage Thompson. This year we're trading Tage Thompson, bringing Alex Tuck back. <laughs> all right. Green light, red light. You guys all right with that trade? I'm all right with it. It's not like the Senators where we're going to get two first. They just won the Stanley Cup. Detroit, I don't even know if they made the playoffs. They consider themselves a good team, though. And so that first rounder, it could be good. It might not be good. I think that's good. Yeah. Boston made more sense. No, they, listen, they, they say that they're buyers and they're willing to go after Tage Thompson. This is the same kind of player. Tage can also play the wing. So if they need to put him on the right wing, he can play a right wing just like Alex Tuck. It's an upgrade, a younger guy with two years left. Yeah, yeah, I like that trade. Will it go through? Trade accepted. All right, so Tage Thompson traded for Alex Tuck and a first rounder from the Detroit Red Wings. There it is. And we have officially given ourselves another drafting window. Next year, three first-round picks. The difference is that these three teams are expected to be playoff-bound. Ourselves, Ottawa just won the Stanley Cup, and Detroit has themselves listed as a buyer with a lot of young potential. So chances are they're going to get even better in the uh, in the offseason, or in preseason, I should say. But there you go. That gives us the option to maybe trade those draft picks at next year's trade deadline if we see the perfect fit. Or if it's a deep draft, just pick up some more players with gold X factors and low elite potential, you know, just like we did last season. So I, I like that. And we didn't want to bring players back because I needed to keep the salary cap uh, clear. And speaking of salary cap, I think that means that everyone now, one year, one year, Tolvin and Thomasine are the only guys signed long term, McTavish. Uh, and then all the guys, so our cap is clean now. Our cap is clean. All right. All we have now are the extensions and, uh, Tomasino and Tolvin. And that's it. That's it. So we have a clean roster. We have a clean cap. 
All right, so let's get to the drafting part of the NHL draft here. I was using the word draft way too many times. Um, do I want to move up from 24? So let's see. I, we can get that guy Placanix at 24 if he's available. Let's see. Placanix. Placanix. Placanix is going at 27. Yeah, so we probably just take Placanix at 24. Uh, and then Rezo was at 32. Do I want to move up in the draft this year, boys? Do I want to try to, like, maybe get, like, uh... Like, I mean, I would just trade draft picks for them. Like, the Colorado Avalanche, uh, 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 31st overall pick. I could go, like, uh, you know, like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> no, no, you know what, no. It's a little fleece, and also, we might get lucky with the later draft picks. You guys have been pretty good in the past with the draft picks late. So, let's just use the draft picks this year, all right? All right, so let's get to drafting. Uh, where are we? Sim to pick. All right, so Sim to pick 24. Let's see what we got. What's come ahead of us here? Let me just call a timeout quickly. What's come ahead of us? Top nine. So we're already in the top nines. Top six, 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 top six. Jesus. Yeah, it was not uh, the fucking. It was not a uh, a good year for draft picks, man. No medium elite. Oh, there you go, medium elite. But we're in the top five now. Yeah, we really didn't. We really didn't uh, lose much. Kempe trade trade Kempe. Kempe's a UFA, guys. He only had one year left. He's walking. He's walking. He's got no trade value. He's in a UFA. Can't do anything with him. Um. All right. So let's make the pick. All right. So you got Baldwin, who is a sniper. But we don't know any X factors. Clifford, no X factors. Hendrickson, we don't know too much about. And then you got Placanics. You guys giving me the green light on Placanics? Oh, we don't even know if this guy has a gold X factor, but he does have silver ones. Ice pack, no contest. Stick him up. Low elite potential. Yeah, it's probably the best, right? Green, green, green. All right, Matei Placanics continuing to add to the blue line. Matei Placanics. You know what? Hang on. Oh my god. Why am I so congested today? <clears throat> I gotta do this right for my intros, man. I gotta I gotta say the right thing. Alright, here we go. With the 24th overall pick, the Nashville Predators select from HC Olamok from Extra Liga, Matei Placanics. What is he? What is he? What is he? Low elite, 64 overall, defensive defenseman. Oh, he does have a gold X factor. It's shut down. It's gold shut down. That's a really good penalty killer right there. No passing X factor, so strictly a defensive defenseman. But that's pretty good. So think about all the defensemen we have now in our system. Westcott, Donovan, Panayi, uh, Metropolit, Placanics. We signed Darlene. You know, like, it's, it's, it's looking good. It's looking good. All right, so we got the one low elite there that was in the first round. Beautiful. All right, so let's sim to our second pick all the way back here at 56. I don't even know if there was anything good taken. Oh, well, that's a good one, though. That's a good one. Um, all right, so I don't think, yeah, there's no other gold X factors. We've passed up all the gold X factors. We do have this goaltender, Toimo Pakishlati, who's got a gold sponge, but also that herd guy, yeah, herd at 67. I won't be able to get heard with my third overall at my third round, or I have to get him now. What do you guys think? The goalie, Pakishlati, or Darius Hurd? Medium elite, guaranteed no X factors with a gem. He's a gem as well, guys. Or the goaltender that might have so I, 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 I it's got to be Darius Hurd. Strength, off offensive instincts, offensive creativity, playmaking built, no weaknesses. Three years, it's it's Hurd. It's got to be Hurd. Trade up for Hurd. So get the goaltender and then trade up for Hurd. Hang on a second. Third round. Uh, it would have to be 57, right? Oh, no. What was it? Hang on a second. It was 64, 68? Hang on. Check, check, check. What am I clicking on? 67. So I'd have to get 67. So it would have to be in, like, the top. It would have to be in, like, this. Like, Vancouver Canucks here. But I have nothing to trade. Like, at this point, I'm just trading deeper draft. No, I can't. I can't, guys. I just have to do it. I just have to make the pick. I can't because I have no prospects that I want to trade for that. And then now I'm just trading, like, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh for a third. No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. All right, so I'm taking Hurd. I'm taking Hurd. I got a minute 30 left. I'm going to take Darius Hurd. All right, let's see how good he is. Two-way forward, medium elites. He is 64 overall. All right, you know what? You know what? He's already 19 years of age, but 64 overall. I've had medium elite guys who are like 40s or 50s. That's not bad. 
Like, he might only take a few years to grow. I'll take that. And that could be a fourth or third liner. And if he continues to grow, it could be a trade bait or maybe a second liner of the future once our, our non-X-Factor second liners age out, basically. McTavish, Tom, uh, Tomasino, and Tolvin. So we got a left-wing medium elite in Hurd and a right-wing medium elite two-way forward in Chara. That's really good. That's really good. Uh, sim to pick. I do want to see what Pakislati was, though. Hang on a second. I want to see what I missed out here in Pakislati. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Pakislati. A medium starter. All right. So he was, all right. So we, you know what? We made the right choice. Medium starter. Not to say he's not going to be good, but no gold X factor. It was two silver ones. Dialed in and contortionist. All right. Good. Good. It's not bad, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with our pick. 88th overall. All right. Now we're going to start having some fun. What are we taking? <laughs> uh, Pear Ottenson. He's maybe X Factor, tape to tape, four years. Uh, we're just we're we're taking shots in the dark now. Mohammed Burnett, uh, what, Weeman. Is there any? Let me just sort by potential, low elite potential. Hoyles. Oh, he's going at 292. I can draft him in like the last pick or something. Uh, Mohammed. Everyone wants Mohammed. <laughs> the name. We're drafting based on the name. Mohammed Burnett. All right, left-handed defenseman. Oh, right-handed defenseman can play the left side and the right side. Um, with the 88th overall pick, the Nashville Predators select from the Flint Firebirds of the OHL, Mohamed Burnett. Let's see what we got here. Uh, top six, medium. No, not much here, ladies and gentlemen. Not much here. I listened to the Twitch fans. They didn't give me anything. <laughs> Fourth rounder. Let's see what we got. Uh, you know, I'm going to take the chance this time, right? I'm going to make my own pick this time. You guys had the last one. I'm getting this one. Uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to give this guy a little bit of uh, confidence. I'm going to draft him higher up than he'd expect, all right? Instead of going 292, I'm going to take him at 120. Malachi Hoyles. Well, I don't know if he's going to be low elite. Uh, no weaknesses. Five years to get better, so he's going to take a while. But that low elite might be a legit low elite. It might just be like a low top six. I don't know. Malachi Hoyles. I'm going to try it out. Malachi, low top six, 49 overall. All right, so not great, not great. I didn't, I didn't hit either. We both didn't hit, ladies and gentlemen. We both didn't hit. Uh, sim to pick 152. Let's see what we got. Nope, I don't. Is that? There's no way that's Morgan Riley. It's got to be like Mike Riley or something. Decline trade. Uh, make pick. All right, so who do you guys want now? Who should I sort by? Potential. We could take a shot at one of these guys. Or... We could also go the enforcer route. Height six foot seven at seventeen years of age. Nicholas Marsh. He's got X Factor. Truculence. Ha! <laughs> Nicholas Marsh. I gotta do it. Six seven, baby. Six seven. Let's go. Enforcer. Top nine. A top nine enforcer. That's actually interesting. That might be something that we could throw on the fourth line just to tough it out. What's his fighting skill? His fighting skill is only 76? Bullshit. He's 6'7". All you got to do is just grab onto the guy and, and, and throw him around a little bit. All right, Marsh. That's a good pick. I'll take that. <laughs> 184. Uh, all right. What about the heaviest dude? Oh, wait. 239. 238 from an 18-year-old. Jimmy Milson. Another left wing, six foot six. I'm doing it. The Milster. <laughs> Enforcer, 48 overall. Low bottom six. <laughs> His fighting skill is 76 as well. All right. We're going to toughen up this team, boys. We're going to toughen up this team. And last but not least, oh, fuck it, I'll do it again. Age. Who's the oldest dude? No, you can't. Let go. Yeah, young player, 17. The smallest dude? You want the smallest dude? All right, all right. The light. <laughs> 167, 5 foot 8. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Alexander Sergeyev. <laughs> Going 626. Sergeyev, welcome to the NHL. <laughs> Left wing sniper, bottom 6 low. Imagine it just said high franchise or something. I'd, I'd fucking die. <laughs> I've never seen it. That would be great. Sergey. All right, so there is the NHL draft. So you see why we traded for first rounders in future years? There really wasn't much. But mechanics could be good. Herd could be good. And then Burnett. We got we got two guys. Not not great. Not a great NHL entry draft. All right, but still, it, it's perfectly fine. All right, so 
We are at the resign stage, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we got here. All right, so first off, the coaching staff. Uh, do I have to bring back anyone? No, everyone's signed. McEachern, goaltenders down here, the AHL assistant. Uh, you got good teaching, but, you know, I'm just going to fire you for right now. I can replace you later. Uh, I need another associate coach. So my associate coach for the AHL has retired. All my NHL coaches are still here for one more year, so that's good. Uh, Gordon, A, B minus, A plus, A plus. Did he grow at all? No, I think he had A already. Yeah, I think Gail Gordon had get uh, <laughs> I think Gail Gordon had A already. Almost said something there. Uh, scouts, do I have to sign anyone? Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. So let me just sign all these guys. Uh, make sure. I can just fire them again in free agency if I notice that there are way better uh, scouts available. But let me just get them signed right now just so it's easier to make, make moves. These aren't guaranteed contracts there, boys. Sorry. And I'll read the fine print. It's right in there. I can leave or I can fire you at any time with no penalty to me or to the Nashville Predator organization or to the NHL. Deal with it. The life of an NHL scout. All right, so the re-sign stage. Let's have some fun with this. All right, so Askarov, Dawes, Vezhmelka, Kojanov. All right, so Kanix and Markov, I want them starting in the AHL next year. We don't have to sign Vutalainen. Kojanov, backup, don't need him. I'm going to release him. Uh, Dawes, you could be the backup. How much do you want? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, two years at 0.8. Yeah, I'll take that. But I only want one year. I only want one year for everyone right now. Vejmelka, how much do you want? Uh, no, okay. So it's, that's obvious. Keep Dawes instead of Vejmelka. He wants too much money. There you go. All right. So Askarov and Dawes, then Placanics and Markov. I could use some extra goalies just in case an injury, but I can pick that up in free agency. Uh, defenseman, uh, 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 Rasmus Dahlin, his contract now kicks in at 10 and a half million for the next eight years. Victor Hedman does want to come back. <sighs> okay, I got to work this out. I got to work this out in my head. Got to work this out. Kovalev, yeah, your sign. Cal Foot, five times five. All right. Poirier. Ugh. Okay, that's better. That's better. Oh, my God. I want to sign these guys, though. Norlander. Jesus. So much money. Uh, Flurry. Let's see. Flurry. Ooh, nice and cheap. Yeah, I'll get bring you back. There you go. Uh, course Jack. I know he's got, yep, yeah, very cheap, good. Yeah, I'll, I, anyone who's a .8, I'm bringing back. Uh, Stanley, probably doesn't want, yeah, 1.2, no thank you. I don't need you. I don't need you, 78 overall. I don't need you, McIsaac. All right, Panayi is probably ready to go. Costi, Metropolitan, Hickey, Oblonsky. Uh Hickey, I got to bring back. Uh, 1.2, let me try to get a little bit cheaper. One mil. There you go. Uh, Westcott. I guess the minimum contract has gone up to 1.2 now instead of sub one, uh, one mil. It always goes up. goes up to 1 mil, and then it goes up to 1.2 mil. Um, uh, do we sign Westcott at 69 overall? Do we sign him for the AHL, or does he... I don't know. 64 seems a little bit low. 69, though. He might be he might be ready, ready to go, because if in the preseason he gets a jump because of his medium elite and he becomes like a 70 or 71 overall, what do you guys think? Give him one year. You can sign him at the start of the season. Uh, that was a one-way contract, brother. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not going to be bringing him up and sending him back down. Back down. It's it's Hickey. He's going to be in the AHL the entire time. 69 is the perfect overall. Wait wait till preseason. All right, so people are saying to wait till preseason. Langdon, I'm going to get re uh, release you. So look at that. Westcott, Donovan, Placanics. You know, it's there. It's there. Moore is... Uh, what do you guys think about this Z more Zachary Moore, low elite, but he's 20 at 57 over. I should sign him just in case. Yeah, just in case. Two-way deal. Rookie contract. We'll see what happens. Probably has some trade value. Yeah. All right. I got him. I got him. Uh, right wingers. All right. So Alex Tuck. I'm going to release Alex Tuck. Sorry, Tuck. Uh, Ramsey. All right. So let's see what we can do with Ramsey. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so Ramsey, I can go eight years at two million. What about the other two? Draper and Yarventi. Uh, Yarventi. <laughs> and Duke. <laughs> All right. All right. 
time for some GM superb man moves. These guys I'm going to force into third liner roles, and they are either going to flourish and become incredible contracts, or they're going to be guys who stick on the fourth line, who a little bit higher than you want, maybe trade bay to the future. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some time and some money into these guys now. All right, cheese? Nah, whatever, man. Whatever. All right, so. Yeah, we're going to match the eight-year deals with Anisimov and everything. So, Ramsey, I'm giving you an eight-year deal at uh, $2 million per year. We'll see if he signs it. Boom, there you go. That's a guaranteed $16 million contract. Come on now. You know you want that. Uh, 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 Yarventi, uh, eight years. At, he wants a little bit more. So, I'll give you 2.25 over eight years. There you go. Uh, uh, Yarventi. And the center, Duke Draper, who doesn't look like he's becoming much. He's stayed at 77 overall for a long time now. Uh, eight years at uh, two mil, sure. See if I can get him a little bit cheaper. 850. <laughs> All right, those those guys signed. Uh, Evangelista, no, I don't need you back. I release you. Uh, Visakis, yes, I want you back. Uh, yeah, the, so the the league minimum now has gone up. I might have to get these guys at 1.2. That's okay because they're. They count as it's 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 not gonna count. it's not gonna it's not gonna go towards the cap the same way other players were well, I would Kuzmenko I'm going to get rid of Afinaseev do you want yeah that's a cheap contract it can bring you back there you go uh, Long what about no no we don't want Long so anyone who's not in the 70s we're not gonna assign just yet Hurd is there Shovel Dave uh, Shovel Dayov uh, okay good. And then the center core, Kempe, get the hell off my team. Rodriguez, get the hell off my team. Kiefer Bellows, get the hell off my team. Fonstad, get the hell off my team. Hillis, get the hell off my team. Two Trape, we're going to wait for you. Pick a Ryan and get the fuck off my uh, Get the hell off my team. My apologies. Bad language. Uh, and Theodore, get the hell off my team. All right, got no center core here. All right, so let's see. Korchek is back. Finiseev is back. Dawes is back. Nice cheap contracts. Ramsey <laughs> projected. <laughs> Flurry is back. Uh, Draper, he extended it. Draper, he's picking up the pennies, man. He needs some money. Yarventi did it as well. Ramsey was the only one. Visaka said no, and Hickey said no. Okay, so I can't go down that far with those two guys. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right, so we're locking up these guys long term. Locking them up. Locking them up. All right, so Hickey, let's get you back. 1.2, fine. All right, that's fine by me. Visakis, 1.2, fine. All right. Uh, Poria, I'm waiting. Ramsey, want to get you signed, man. Want to get you signed right now. What did I try? I tried to get 2 mil for you and it didn't accept it? All right, all right you're playing hardball. I, I respect that. All right, 2.1. There you go. <laughs> and then we got to make our decision on Hedman, Norlander, and Foot. Let's advance the day. Uh, bang. Bang. These are our scouts that we um, extended as well. Ramsey is back. Visakis is back. And Hickey is back. Doom! There it is. So, for the next eight years, ladies and gentlemen, we have Maxi Manisimov, Rasmus Dahlin, Emil Yarventi, Cameron Ramsey, and Duke Draper. And the fact that we have these three guys at that low of salary, it's great. Now, if they become bona fide third liners, those are going to look like great freaking contra uh, uh, contracts, right? But if they don't develop and they're going to be fourth liners, so be it. It'll be like a Casey Zizekas type contract. Well, there goes the future. That's not, what do you mean? That is the future, man. 22, 22, 23, 20, 28 years of age. We got to lock these guys in now before they want three, four, five million dollars per year. Get the hell out of here. All right. So now let me figure this out. So we have $26 million of cap space, right? $26 million of cap space. Now next year is going to kick in and we're going to have to give contracts to Fotinos and Lavalley. Now, if we have $26 million of cap space right now, I'm going to need I'm going to need maybe like 18 19 million dollars of cap space to sign Lavalley and uh and uh, what's his name? Now is anyone going to be off the team next year? No. We got everyone signed now. So I have I don't have that much to work with. So okay, so Victor Hedman I can sign for 1 year and it doesn't hurt us at all. I can I have about I have about 10 million dollars to work with. Can I get these three defensemen all signed for less than 10 million dollars? Foot, Poirier and Norlander. All right, so Foot, he's going to cost me 5 mil. There's 5 right there. Poirier is going to cost me 5 mil. 
and then Norlander. But I can trade. I can trade one of these guys. At the yeah, I can trade one of them. But the only thing is, I can't sign if there's not the cap space. Fuck. I think I can get two of them. I think I can get two of them, ladies and gentlemen. So, hmm. All right. So what's the con- what's the uh, the Tomasino contracts right now? It's uh, one, two, three, four. Four more years. All right. So I can hand out four year deals. I can still trade these guys. Don't worry. Um, four year deal to foot. All right. So foot. He wants a five year deal. I'll give you a four year deal. Take him up to 33. I can trade him in the last when he's got two years left. I got to try to save some money, though. I have to try to save some money. All right. So four and a half million for four years. Cal foot. I'm absolutely willing to do that. Boom. There you go. And then Poirier. Same thing. Uh, four years at four and a half million. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. We do that, and it's only nine million. I might be able to get Norlander back then. The cap is also going to go up. I got to think about that. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. Yeah, all right. Got to go with it. Four years. There you go. So first, we'll try Foot and Pori. We'll see, what it's, we'll see if they sign. If they do, we'll take a look at the salary cap situation again, see if we can get Norlander back, all right? So these are all the scouts still. Uh, Cal Foot, ah, he's going to reject it because of the dollar amount. And, okay, so Poirier came back. Poirier is a little bit younger. So, four and a half million for Poirier. That's good. All right, I have to get this guy. The, 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 the chemistry works perfectly with these players. I need them back. There's no replacements. Until our young guns come up, there's no replacements. It's these guys that lead into our, our crop of young players. So, four years at 4.750 oh, for Cal Foot. Let me try that. How many days left do I have? I want to make sure I don't. I only have, like, two more negotiations after this one. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. Come on now, foot. Oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch! I'm putting you in a position to succeed and you're going to fight me over fucking a million dollars total? All right, fine. I mean, it's his money. He wants to get it. And I'm changing the year length as well. I want to sign. Yeah. 4.850. Oh. Going to do it. Boom. I got two I got two days left. You got to do it here. You got to do it here because I got to get Hedman signed as well. Advanced day, you got to do it here. You got to do it here. Motherfucker. He's going to ask for more. He's going to ask for more in free agency. I know it, man. I know it. He's going to ask for more in free agency. He's going to ask for more in free agency. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Think this through. Think this through. You, 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 you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You got to find a way. Okay. So your defensive core for next year. Darlene... Kovalev. I got Poirier now. That's three. If I get Hedman, Foot, Norlander back, I don't need I don't want to go in for free agency and sign anyone big. I want these three defenders back. I know they work on the team and we got we had a good regular season. Come the trade deadline, we might be able to upgrade to another defender for a playoff push, but I want these three guys. Now, Hedman and Norlander are not going to affect actually oh, I could sign Norlander to a one year deal. Then it wouldn't affect it. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Four years at $5 million per for Cal Foot. If you don't sign that, you go screw yourself. Uh, four years at 5 mil, that puts us down to 15. Or uh, not 15, sorry. That puts us down to like 18 mil. Then Hedman wants one year at 10 and a half. Puts us down to like 8 mil. And then Norlander we can get signed as well. Yeah, I can make it work. And we just need a fourth line center. I have everything else covered on the team. Yeah, okay. I got it. I got it in my head. I got it in my head. May not make sense to you guys, but I got it in my head. All right, so Victor Hedman. Yeah, I'll give you $10.9 million to come back. Your last season, Victor. One year. Bang. There it is. One year. And then Norlander as well. One year, buddy. And I'll pay you $3.5 All right? One year. Boom. One year. Boom. Boom. All right, there it is. All right, so I am going after these players, but I got to do it in a way where I don't affect the Lavalley and Fotino extensions. All right, so Norlander, Foot, and Hedman. Bang, bang, bang. And goaltender situation, we are taking care of. Cal Foot, you better freaking sign. If Cal Foot doesn't sign, I'll be pissed, man. I'll be effing pissed. Unsigned players, yeah, tell me about it. I know, I know. Continue. Victor Hedman is back. His second stage of his career with the Nashville Predators will continue. The the reigning Norris Trophy winner is back on our team. And I know he's dropping off, but he's still going to be a good defender. So I like that. Uh... Although I'm interested to, in principle to an extension. So he's happy with the years 
and he's happy with the freaking money. I'm going to reject this offer at this dollar value. I'm not content with the amount of minutes I played this past season. You we, we, you want top two time? You're not you're not that guy. I got Norlander signed. All right, all right, all right. He's still there. I can still get him. He's still there. I can still get him. And I have $10 million of cap space available. Plus the 10 million. I have 20. For, yeah, okay. Okay, I'm in a good spot. I'm in a good spot. I'm in a good spot. We're okay, ladies and gentlemen. I am in a good spot. So let me try to give you guys a visual of how our team looks and what we need to get in free agency, all right? So I need a backup goalie. Uh, we have Askarov. We have Dawes, Blakanics, and Markov. I need a backup goalie for injuries, so I'll get one goalie. Uh, defenseman, Darlene, Hedman. Kovalev, Poirier, Norlander. I have Korsjak, who's supposed to be my seventh defenseman. Fleury can also be the seventh or eighth defenseman. I could go with it like that, but considering I have $10.7 million of cap space, I'd like to use that on one defenseman. Can't go long term with it because I don't want to affect Fotinos and Lavalli's extension next year. But, um, well, we, no, sorry, we can go long term if it's like $5 million or less. Sorry, I can't go like a big, like, like say there's like a, a defenseman. That's worth $8 million per year. I can't do that. Cannot do that. And then the forward core, it's going to be Anisimov. He's 91! What the fuck? You <sighs> whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm sure he go, he'll go up and down. I, uh, good lord. Why did he drop? Jesus. Anisimov, Lavalli, and Fotinos on the first line. McTavish, Tomasino, Tolvanen on the second line. Right? Yarventi are our, our, our guys that we just signed to eight-year deals. Yarventi, Draper, and uh, Ramsey on the third line. And then Chara, Budenz, and then we can find a, a fourth-line center. All right? So I have $10 million to find one defenseman and a fourth-line center. Plenty of money. Plenty of money right here for free agency, right? But before we get to that, it's the big ones. Oh, please want to extend. Please want to extend. Please want to extend. Please, please, please. Lavalli, no. <laughs> Oh my god, they don't want to extend Lavalli and Fotinos. What, you don't want to be on this team? You want first line ice time, you piece of shit. You've left us down here in the bottom six for two years. You only bring us up when you need us in the playoffs, and then our team can't play defense. They don't want to play in Nashville. Lavalli, how much do you want? It's it, That's about where I thought. And Fotinos, what do you want? That You know what? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, we got to go long term with them, right? Fotinos is definitely worth it, and, and Lavalli as well. Yeah, you have to. You have to do this. You have to do this. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I'll sign them to seven-year extensions, because maybe I can save a little bit of money, and that, that will match up then with Anisimov and uh, Darlene and uh, the eight-year window that we've opened up now, right? So I'll sign them to seven-year extensions so they all match up. So Lavalli. Uh, seven year at 11. I might be able to get like, we could, we could try a few where we go down here to 10 mil. What do you think about seven times 10 for Lavalli? And then like Fotinos, uh, seven times like six and a half is pretty good. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you know what? I was expecting them to get more, so I don't even want to fool around with it. Lavalli, seven years at 11. I'll go seven years at 11. Yeah, that's about right. You guys got giving me the green light for this? You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I, I want YouTube to be able to chime in on this. We've been going for a long time. We can save uh, Year 7's preseason for the next video. YouTube, what do you think about Lavalli? What should I offer him? I don't know if I'm... I, I'm worried if I go too low, then all of a sudden he'll ask for even more. Would you guys be okay with 7 times 11? I'm all right with that. It's getting more than Darlene, but he is a first overall pick, and he just scored five goals in the playoffs. And this is going to be the first year where he plays first line ice time. Um, I, I do think he's going to be a stud of the future. Seven times 11, 10.5. Okay, so the Twitch scouts are saying like 10.5. I want to see what you guys have to say. Or should I go eight times 11? Like that's an extra six. I know I can get seven times 11, and it matches Darlene. And then Fotinos... Uh, if I go seven, I could, I mean, six, seven, five for That's fine. You know, I'd be perfectly fine with just giving him what he wants for seven mil right there. So Fotinos isn't the issue. It's Lavalli. All right. So you guys let me know about that with Lavalli. Is there anyone else I need to sign? Uh, no, 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 no. In the system. I'm not going to be signing any of our young guns. No, no, no. That's not going to work out like that. Uh, goaltender situation. 
uh goalies no okay so i need youtube to comment on the valley and uh fotinos that situation um let me also coaching staff let me just see if that head coach that we're looking for that that beautiful pinch cycle pinch cycle head coach is there uh jesus a plus a plus a plus jeez best head coach in the game right now is available marvin hutchins 281 163 and 48 my god but a generalist not looking uh not something that we're looking for uh pinch cycle balance cycle so we're just looking for pinch cycle pinch cycle all right let's see what we got if anyone at the top has it pinch shoot pinch shoot see that's what we have with uh, gail gordon i'm looking for pinch cycle pinch cycle nothing nothing balance cycle balance cycle nothing 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 it's like that hardest oh, there we go no, no, that's balance cycle. Damn it. You serious? Pinch shoot, pinch shoot. Look at this shit. I can't find one. There definitely isn't someone of it. There you go. The first one, it's that same guy, Vaclav Kondraktek. How good is he? He's a C. There's, there's no point in bringing him up. So we just got to get lucky in one of these years, finally uh, finding a head coach that has the pinch cycle, pinch cycle uh, uh, strategies. As of right now, there is nothing available. And last but not least, free agency, ladies and gentlemen. Who is available in free... Oh, my God. Mats Gustafson, the RFA, is available. The Chicago rivalry. I could steal Mats Gustafson for them. And I just picked up a bunch of draft picks for next year. What is it going to cost me if I wanted to sign him? I only have $10.7 million. The next four years of first round. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I mean, you'd have to make some moves. I'd have to get rid of Nor. I just signed Norlander. I'd have to trade him. There's no guarantee that they do it. Oh, Jesus. I could just screw over Chicago, man. Seven years. I want an eight year. He would only, oh my God. All right, all right, all right. That's that's a hell of a, that's a hell of a push if I go for that. Although, giving up four first round picks at this stage to get a guy like that would not be a horrible thing. It would not. Considering we also have two first rounders from Ottawa and from, um, and from Boston for next season, right? It's the three years after that. That's a little bit rough, but still, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right. So goaltender situation. I got Askarov. Uh, I just need a backup defenseman. You got Josh Morrissey, who's asking for $10 million. Brett Pesci. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob Slavin, one year deal. Just get some X factors on the team. You know what I mean? Instead of, uh, Instead of uh, Cal Foot, Cal Foot now wants four years at four, five point two. I was willing to give you four years at five. Are you kidding me? You piece of shit, Cal Foot. But I can afford him. I can just go out and give him four years at five two five. So that's fine as well. Out of all the defensemen here, I would rather just get Foot instead of getting someone else like Ryan Merkley. Let's see, Ryan Merk. I, I I don't know if any of these guys fit on the lines. We know that Cal Foot does, and he can be. He can be the transition from where we are now to where we will be with our crop full of young defensemen, right? So I just need somebody to get in there for uh, for the meantime. And then I need a fourth line center, which it could be like Dvorak, it could be it could be Glass, it could be Valeno, it could you know, like we could do anything like that. Okay. So you know what? Yeah, I'm absolutely stopping the video here. Uh, it's no longer the Lavalley and uh, Fotino's contracts. Although, if I, oh fuck, if I do that with Gustafson, then I'd have 10 million, I'd have to, it would be a lot, I'd have to look at the salary cap situation, ladies and gentlemen, but Mats Gustafson, the man who was drafted in year two first overall, that would give us the first overall pick in 2024, and then the first overall pick in 2025, a franchise defenseman and a franchise winger, holy shit, this could be massive, this could be, this could be the move that you need to pull off. If I can do it. And it's realistic because it's an RFA situation, right? Gustafson didn't sign, and now Chicago has to deal with other teams. I mean, they'll probably just... You know what? Hang on a second. Before we turn it off, they'll probably just match it. How much cap space do they have? Because they just lost, like, Kopitar. Uh, how much cap space do they have? Oh, for God's sakes. They got $28 million of cap space. They're not going to sign him. They'll just match whatever it is. They're going to match whatever the hell it is. No, no, no. They're going to, they got $28 million of cap space. There's no messing around with it. They're just going to match it. So we can try it maybe for fun, but if we're going to try it, I need to be prepared for it going through. 
Uh, Korchinski, they still have Renz, Brandstrom, Kemmel, there you go, still 85 overall. Lutz, Bales, they gotta get Bales side to an extension as well. Yeah, that team, uh, do they still have the veterans on that team? 24 now, they're getting younger now, they're getting younger, they need to sign Gustafson. Ooh, but I'd love to screw over the Chicago Blackhawks, man. <laughs> They just got beaten five games to Colorado, right? So Gustafson's like, the hell with this. I'm getting out of here. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Because this, I'm really thinking about doing this. Let's just do our due diligence on Matt Gustafson, all right? So his X factors. In reverse doesn't help us with chemistry. Off the rush doesn't help. Tape to tape, send it. Really good, really good. Heat seeker. So power play, excellent. Penalty kill with quick pick might work. I don't know if quick pick works. Um, so definitely a power play guy. Offensive guy. Uh, let's see his individual stats here. Passing 95. Offensive awareness is not great. 88. I don't know if he's going to get much better. I'd want that at least 90. Um, I think the game has like five attribute intervals. So like 85 and 90, 95 and 88 is basically an 85. Um, uh, defensive awareness, 90 shot blocking and stick checking 98, 97. He's a really good skater though. Holy shit. Um, his sh hard shot He's physical also. Yeah. He's just a, he's a tank. And how does he play? How does he play? In three seasons, it's rookie year, 30 points. Yeah, so he's not going off with points. It might be just the, the position that he's in. Yeah, he's not getting much power play points. That would change on our team. Uh, and then he hits, he blocks shots, and he takes the puck away. Yeah, he's, he's the kind of guy who I think would give you a real good um, playoff simulation because he's a legit 93 overall, right? And him with Darlene on the – oh, the two Swedes. The, oh. It could be perfect. All right, so there's a lot that's happened in this video. Trading away Forsberg, trading away Thompson. A lackluster draft with our draft picks, but we got draft picks for next year. Um, we got the guys signed. We need a defenseman. We need a fourth-line center. We got to extend Lavalle. We got to extend Fotinos. What do we do there? And then the big question mark, Matt Gustafson. What the hell do we do? Do we go for it? Let me know, YouTube. It's going to be a big decision, and I'll see you guys next time.